Today I'm joined by someone who played a character that we really enjoyed watching on Corrie over the course of the past few months. It's Stephen Reed actor Todd Boyce and we're going to be talking about bodies in bins, bouncing off bonnets and bashing blokes on the bonds. Todd, thank you for joining me today. Great alliteration, yes, uh, nice to be here. <laughs> Good to see you. Now, look, first things first, and you know this has been a bit of a, a topic on the podcast as well. Could you tell me a little bit more about the the possibility of there being an extra six months of Stephen's story? Because I kind of, I, I'm not, what's, what's going, what was going on there? Yeah, I, I kind of wish I hadn't mentioned it now because, um, <laughs> because I, I, I think maybe too much has been made of it. It was just in September of 22, 2022 that, um, Ian and I were chatting on the phone and he was really enjoying, the team were really enjoying writing for me, mm. uh, for Stephen. And uh, I think I think what really happens is, because I arrived and we had a Zoom meeting around um, three months before I started and very kindly Ian told me that I was gonna be a murderer, which was, you know, good information to have. Yeah. Oh, that's that's pretty heavy. And then he went on, I realized, you know, this is villain terrain. So I got really excited about it. But then I arrived in at the studios and the first person to come up to me in the, in the green room, I think you might've seen me say this elsewhere, said, so you're the new serial killer. And I said, really? <laughs> I think probably, you know, Ian, Ian was funny. He said, well, that was maybe my fault. I did stand in, in the middle of the green room a couple couple weeks ago and said, a new serial killer is coming, coming to town. Um, <laughs> But I think in a sense it was quite fluid in terms of seeing what I was capable of and whether I could walk and talk or chew bubblegum at the same time. So they, they, they had me on three six month contracts. Right. And that was ability and that was what was agreed. And I think they toyed with the idea, they, they liked the idea of everything that happened um, have, having happened and then for Jenny and Stephen, just to just to just to enter into this wedded bliss, and for life to become as normal as possible, yeah, uh, which would have been divine and great. Because I love working with Sally and Matthew so much, mm. and I would have been factory or working at the factory, and she would have been, you know, and but we would have been living above the rovers. And I, 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 I think the audience just couldn't quite take it. You know, there was, I mean, and, and like you said in your in your. <laughs> your podcast don't you know don't listen to the haters you know because there's a lot of that but i it is interesting i think i think a lot of people just thought you know it's justice is a different is, is on a different timeline than than in real life isn't it in a soap obviously mm -hmm. wanted wanted to get him found out so i think they timed it and they thought well let's let's take me out as planned uh 18 months and and do it as we planned mm -hmm. it, in, in the super soap week so yeah, yeah. I, I quite like the idea and, and it obviously never happened this way of having a serial killer as on the rovers return team just for a little bit you know having steven as landlord that would have been quite fun it's great huh? yeah just you know just just sort of moseying on down to the bar and talking to the the, yeah. the regulars and you know with this huge <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, do, do you think that steven really loved jenny then oh Deeply, deeply. Yeah, that's, 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 there was a, 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 I don't want to offer up more, more coulda, shouldas, but, um, um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, he, we, we had a couple of more scenes that had to be cut because of time. Mm. And it was just, it was towards Super Soap Week when we were, when I think before we were going off to Paris. Just a few little. We had a little. This isn't. This isn't the day. Day at the bistro, which was really lovely, flirtatious. We had a um, two scenes in the rovers' back room, which were just setting up more of that chance to to show, you know, that that we were really in love. Um, but I think from from the start, he's always had an eye for her, hasn't he? I mean, they they planted that very well. He's 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 just crazy about her. Crazy yeah. about her. And like you said, Sally Ann Matthews is so wonderful, isn't she? She's just, 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 she's, she and, and Jenny are sexy and sassy and fiery and great fun. So yeah, yeah, 
both Stephen and Todd, you know, <laughs> were very, very keen to be <laughs> with Sally Ann and Jenny. No, yeah. no doubt about it. <laughs> Do you think he would have hurt her in that hostage situation outside the Rovers? No, I don't think he would have. He just had to get out, you know. Um, so he was, that was just a, that was just staged really. Uh, mm. He would. Yeah. T- tell me about filming those those scenes, the hostage scenes inside and outside the rows. They they seem pretty intense. Yeah, they were. They I, th- I think the inside was about nine pages, and it was it was like a one act play. And it was both uh, Sally Ann and I said you'd read it. You, it was it was hard to to gauge its modulations. You you kind of couldn't. Okay, so wait a minute. So I did. You, we just it was hard to remember. Hmm. We're both, we're both, thank goodness, we both find it easy to remember lines generally. And mm. that's odd, you know. I think there's, I think there is a photographic memory thing without sounding voodoo-ish uh, on my part. I, I really, um, as much as I would like to be feeling every line and, and, and you know, I do, I rely a lot on, on, on us, on a, partial photographic memory and i you know when you're you're standing in this on the cobbles and everyone assembles for the first read through and people if they, they they know their lines pretty well but it's nice to have a just a read through one or two times mm. you see the actors even though they're not looking at their scripts they'll turn the page because they know where it is and they so so mercifully uh my my memory got better and better and better and better and and, and i could remember a lot of lines and the more I could remember, the more they threw at me. <laughs> so, so, so. <laughs> yes, hard to, to, to that. That scene was very, very hard to learn um, for two people who can who don't have trouble learning lines at all. Because I said, "Where's the passport? Have you got the passport? Did you take the passport? Give me the passport. I want the passport." So yeah. if you if lines are repetitive, they're they're hard to learn, yeah. obviously, because you know you, it's hard to distinguish between them. And it was just such a long scene with a lot of action, um, and we had to. Uh, because of logistics, we had to film the broken bottle hostage situation um, on the on uh, on the ex- the exterior before mm. we f- the interior. Oh, I so, see. So Sally Ann's terrific in terms of um, kind of getting uh, things that need to be done to improve. Uh, her scenes and anyone's scenes with with who she's with and she called unusually and rightly so for a commercial uh, for a um, rehearsal uh for that long scene so mm. after after i was filming i had like a 10 hour day i was so tired <laughs> uh, doing super soap week uh, you know outside um on location i came back and uh, the director was had to do some more on location he came back we Makeup needed to know what was going on. Costume needed to know how dirty I would be and mm. how, you know, disheveled uh, Jenny's hair would be by the time we got out onto the. So 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 so, thank goodness we did that rehearsal because by the time we showed up to film that that scene took an entire day, wow. and and um and that's unusual because there was so much action as well. Mm. Uh, we knew we knew. We, we knew where we were going and we could learn the lines remembering where the moves were so yeah it was um it was sort of a, a little mini everest that scene but it was so terrific to do and it was i think it was really well written so yeah, yeah. It was good. i i love the bit at the end when uh, you were being zipped up in your body bag and you had the smirk on your face where did the idea for that come from do you know i we it was it was kind of mooted that he would you know, you don't know if he's dead or alive until you see the, you know, yeah. that's that's pretty normal stuff. Mm. And I didn't even know I was doing it. I just, I just <laughs> thought, <laughs> but if I, if I appear to be alive, itch, and we nobody discussed it, and then, and I, I saw it back and thought, wow, you really are kind of, you know, a happy uh, <laughs> sort of bit for that. Uh, yeah, literally corpsing. I was corpsing. Of course. <laughs> Now, throughout that final week, Corey wanted to keep us guessing about whether or not Stephen would claim another victim, whether that be, you know, Tim or Sarah or Audrey or maybe even a surprise victim. As far as you know, was one more kill for Stephen ever a possibility? Um, there were always rumours about 
who I might kill and 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 it was um quite a few you know mainstay regulars big name cast members were there were rumors always rumors so you know we it was it was interesting um um and then and then if I was told about one person I thought oh my god you know I'm standing next to them making a cup of tea talking along and I, I've sort of been told possibly in six months time I'm going to bump them off you know so so it was a bit it was odd like that um but yeah I mean did you think Tim was dead when no when, when... I I you did no I thought I... it was too early in the week we thought he would be sure. fine but Throughout the yeah. rest of the week, it was like, oh, is it is it going to be like Sarah when you hit her over the head or or Elaine? Because Elaine was brought back just the week before and it seemed like she was like, hey, I'm back to be a victim. Yeah, that'd be, that would have been yeah, an easy kill, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 yeah I have some friends, friends who are quite savvy and, you know, Coronation Street, huge fans. And, and one of them really thought, you know, really thought Tim was dead. I thought I couldn't say anything, obviously, but it. I was surprised. I thought, oh, that's that's good because he's he's you know he's pretty sharp audience member. So I thought, oh, that's 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 good. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you said that when you were invited back last year, you were told straight away that you'd be a, be a killer, that Stephen would be a killer. Was there any how how would you say that Stephen has changed over the years from the last time that you're in it? That he's now ended in you know in, in this place where where he's all right to yeah. kill someone. Yeah, do you know that the whole thing is about um, the wheels coming off his life, his, his life financially mm -hmm. in Milan. So by the time he shows up in Weatherfield, you know, it's this big, I'm here, yeah. and he's he's already dead on his feet. So when he arrived a year and a half ago, he was just spent. So the energy it took to just get through the last you know, certainly the first couple of months being back and he just, he just has nothing. Mm. Um, and where do you go when you have nothing? If you still have a mother or a father, you go home. Yeah. So, so, so that was what he lost everything. Um, and whether that was the pandemic or some dodgy dealings or a loan he couldn't repay or risking a product line that didn't fly um he, he he was just so 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 what's fascinating is that he was yeah he he just what he had been through in milan i mean he probably borrowed money from from loan sharks i mean he was just he got out of there with his briefcase and that terrible brown suede jacket maybe a suit bowled up in a you know in a carrier bag do you know what i mean that was the they they loved the idea that he was always wearing the same clothing, which which mm. I I had the idea of, and then when I showed up in my dressing room, you know, five months later, I'm still wearing the same suit. I was like, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> the board, like you know, kind of, so I kind of talked them in. I said, please, let's get some other some more gear. I I I know know I know the idea of it, but ugh, yeah. What was it like? being back in Weatherfield for the first time in 15 years. Like, was it lovely to be able to reconnect with some of the old, your old cast mates from before? Yeah, definitely, because it was such a luxury. Um, I had quite a few scenes with Jack Shepard uh, 15 years previously mm. and with Tina, so that was great. Um, I'd not met Ben Price and I just love him. Um, and... Uh, we historically you know he'd gone out to canada and i'd mentored him yeah and uh so so that was important to kind of you know fill that history in and just to be in the same room as helen worth and sue nichols my sister and, and half sister and mum is just it is just that thing where you just pick up like you've never never left the room you know so that that's fantastic yeah and then you know just all of them. I mean, Barbara Knox is so gorgeous to me, and uh, all the people who'd been there. Um, God, uh, yeah, it, it was great, great, great to be back. Great to be back. Mm -hmm. In both of your previous stints on the show, Stephen had been much more of a minor character, but this time round, he'd, he'd pretty much become a leading man. If you can have such a thing on a soap opera, were you prepared for how intense the story would be? I. It was, I, 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 I wasn't, I mean, it was just, 
I would just get these, you know, you, usually you you get sort of maybe eight episodes in a in a 12 episode block, which is two weeks of and it would be like 10, 12, 12, 12 in my in my cubby or on my emails throwing. I, I think I broke the record for the most episodes in a, in a single year. Wouldn't surprise that, me. Amazing, isn't it? And I broke when I was, you know, they, everyone convened for my final scene and said, you know, farewell. And, and Ian McLeod said they'd check the records and I'd by like a few country miles had broke the number of hours in the building uh, in a given <laughs> year. I, yeah, it felt like it. I said, um, a, a, a brilliant photographer, I sat for him last Friday because uh, I was up in Manchester doing, you know, finishing up on the press and doing that that uh, that screening on the Friday night. And I said, I said, I, I'd, I'd love you to take photo, photos of me, but I said, I, I look like those those after pictures they love to show of U.S. presidents who've served two terms. You know, <laughs> just, I stopped going to the gym. I was like, it was a miracle if I took, you know, the vitamins that I take every day, I, you know, so it's kind of like rehabilitation now. That has turned out really well. He's, he's, a, he's a genius, but uh, yeah. So it, it, it took its toll, you know, physically, I think mm. it's, um, it'll be nice to kind of get back to, to, I don't, I don't know that I'll ever, I don't know that any actor, many actors ever experienced that, that grind, that goes on for that long. It reminded me of films that I have worked on where I played leads and those those periods will last sometimes for like, I don't know, six weeks. And you think, wow, I'll just, I'll get through this. And this just this just went on for like, yeah, 15 months or so. It was pretty yeah. amazing. But it was brilliant because it's, it's exhilarating. It's not exhausting when you've just got so much to do. You know, it's just, yeah. it's, it's what you want and, uh, and like I say, I, I did find it easy to learn lines. It was like a muscle that that, that kept getting easier and easier and easier, which was mm. such mm. so joyous because then you can act and you're not sitting there worried about you know you're not trying to remember lines, which is. But I I I've ne I was never in a scene where. I I was, um, sort of propping up the scene. I, I was always in storyline, which was just, yes. greedy, selfish, you know, lucky <laughs> me, just heaven. Yeah, yeah. good. What about you? Must have, there must have been quite a big increase in media and fan attention that came with the story. How did you find dealing with that? Um, media is great because I just, you know, the questions are, are always great. I find, and it makes me think about the character. A lot of the questions that I was being asked made me think, "Wow, it's a, you know, it's actually a good." I haven't even thought of that myself, and that's something I should be be addressing. So I love I love talking to to interviewers, um, and the. In in person, the attention was was gorgeous. Um, if I dared to look at comments on Twitter, it was like, oh, uh, I just, you you actually want to say, you know what? <laughs> but yeah. you know you never. I mean, it's much more powerful to ignore ignore than do than do anything crazy like that. But things like the, the online, the the only criticism. I mean, of course they they're going to they're going to go for your Achilles heel and say he's a you know, terrible actor or the, the, they do that with everyone but the thing that bugged me the most was oh it's a fake canadian accent and he's not i'm thinking like this guy is not going to sound like joe from winnipeg i mean he's just not he's like he's a cosmopolitan you know international businessman who's who's been traveling the world he's, he was his parents were northern who took him across to you know to mm. to canada um and yeah, uh, yeah. So, so that was that was like he would not sound like oh hey yeah oh no I I I'm you know hi Audrey you let's go for a coffee shall we huh <laughs> he was that so you know wrong the the accent was spot on as far as I'm concerned but have yeah you found because you you've lived all over haven't you have you found that your personal accent has changed over the years oh, completely yeah very very much I mean I just. You know, I I play when I play Americans, I do have to think. Okay, you know, flatten those vowels and, and have to have to think about it. And I, and when I came here from Australia, I had a bit of an Australian thing going on, um, which is kind of so. It's it's a it's a very very messed up accent, but <laughs> but, but that didn't affect Stephen Reed's accent. I can no, tell you. no. So going back to what we were saying about um, 
interactions with with the press and fans and everything something when I've interviewed um the likes of Conor McIntyre and Brian Capron before I always ask them about the old women in the street come wagging their fingers at them did you have people like that going now you're gonna get caught one day or I did I did I I I I yeah um the last one was was in a supermarket and I was trying to find an item and someone was start, a woman who was probably I was 63 or so uh she, I said excuse me and she looked up and she was she was just like yeah and she just hates me I mean she said, she said <laughs> oh oh I I don't like you she said she said Anyway, yes, uh, uh, she was actually flummoxed, you know, and then and then she felt bad, and then she said, "Well, I suppose someone's got to be the bad, you don't?" Then, well, anyway, she was just she was so shaken by. <laughs> well, Stephen's always been a bit of a gay, anyway, hasn't he? Even like in the mid nineties, you weren't exactly the nicest of characters. Yeah, not really. I mean, um, yeah, you know, rejecting rejecting the the work, turning his nose up at the work that that Mike Baldwin's factory had, yeah, yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't as little sweetie softy, was he? And he was always a little bit embarrassed by Audrey, you know, fussing over him and, you mm. know, saying he'd go to the hotel and not stay at the house, but then he got talked into it. So yeah. I think there were, there were a few little see seeds of that. Yeah. Quite cruel to Alma as well, I think, rebuffing her. Yeah. Poor Alma, yeah, he was. <laughs> and and it, it was based on that kind of, it was the nineties and that 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 yuppie yeah. figure that we were about, wasn't it? Where it was mm. all about yes, um, you know, kind of greed and corporate, mm. you know. Do you remember much yeah. about getting the job back in back in the mid nineties, how you kind of came to start off in Corrie? Yeah, I I I remember getting the train up to Piccadilly from London and I had I think I I think I might have photocopied um, the page that was closest to Granada because mm. I knew I had no no sat nav then no and I found my way there and um, I went up into the into the offices at Granada in in the Granada building and uh, I just had this really great interview this really terrific I read I read a couple of scenes and I just really relaxed great interview and i i'd done soap when i was when i i got a soap in australia called the restless years uh before my my final exams um and i told them a story about the equivalent i stayed in my school uniform like so many people do for that year and then i went to drama school hmm. so it was the other way around but i learned so much about uh stagecraft and all that and it was a friday night and they'd wheeled the bar out of the equivalent of, of the Rovers. And I had a, a two-hander with someone. And I thought, well, I can't just stand there. So I, I knew my shots well enough that I just pretended I was leaning on the bar for this kind of two-page scene. Yeah. It was very clever. And uh, I, it was the last scene of the day. The bar had gone off to carpentry to be you know, touched up. And this young director, who was up in the box, who was directing, came down in the, into the green room. He said, Todd, so why didn't you, why didn't you ask for a pint? Why didn't you, why didn't you, you know, you could have ordered a, a bowl of peanuts. I said, Denny, the bar wasn't there. You know, so, so I was like, <laughs> it, you, so much in soap, you know, and if you can do soap, God, you can do anything. Hmm. And so I, they, they rather liked that story, I think. And that, that was, that was a help. And I think, it, 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 you know, it was good casting for me to be Audrey's son, the the colouring and so forth. Mm. So yeah. mm. uh, then I just, I, I got pretty fa fairly soon found out that it was, that I was going to do it. And um, I remember watching the Christmas special that, that Christmas, it was around Christmas time that I got it uh, in 95 mm. and um, to start in 96. And uh, so I remember watching like Steve McDonald's and Sue Nichols, playing my mom, I thought, okay, I'm just watching it for the first time with a whole different lens, you know, I think. Yeah. She's had, had you I'm, seen much Coronation Street before going for the part? Yeah, I, I, I did because um, in, in Australia, it was when I was in school, when I was uh, in, in high school, it was, it was prime time, always, 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 mm. always on, 
on on you know the the, the sort of best slot on yeah. TV so I can watch and uh, yeah um, Bet Lynch and yeah I, yeah I was just really quite fascinated by it so so I was quite aware of it and then when I came to London um, I, I loved watching EastEnders and I loved tuning into Coronation Street as well and you know just in and out it was always yeah well timed don't they that if you if you you're gonna you, you're gonna bump into it of an evening if, because it's just they're so well placed aren't they so mm, yeah mm, mm. It, it seems I've, I've been looking on your imdb page talking about some of you looking for some of your older work i saw that you started off in soap but it seems like since coming into the industry barely a year's gone by where you've not had a role on tv or, or movies are you the sort of person that likes to keep busy Definitely, yeah. And um, I've probably done a play every sort of year and a half mixed mm. in with that, which has been brilliant. Um, but yeah, I do. And what's what's extraordinary about film is that, you know, I've seen the world. I mean, I've 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 I was in northern Italy with Everest and I was in Western Samoa uh, with um a, a granada um thing about robert louis stevenson spent you know two months as a as a 28 year old in the western samoa you know romania south africa um rome uh you know just just these these extraordinary places um uh puerto rico just on and on brazil i was in rio uh you know not too long ago doing so th that's what's so exciting mm. and doing what I, I just love I, I my my one of my brothers was over um we went to Liverpool with his wife and uh to watch the the British Open and we we went to like a, a beer tent to have a break from following the golfers around and he, he said so when are you he's 65 he said so when are you when are you going to retire I said what I'm never gonna I wouldn't you know 80 if I live that long 85 you know yeah I, I, I just I doesn't doesn't even enter I don't think an actor's mind it just certainly doesn't enter my mind I just want to keep doing it I think mm. hopefully we'll keep getting you know even more interesting you know? you think you'll end up uh do you think you'll be offered more villainous parts following following your stint as Stephen I think I will uh, one of my agents who I'm still close to is a great guy he's he's 85 now and we're in touch and he's a huge coronation street fan he said you know you 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 realize forevermore you're going to be um offered tours of murder mysteries if you if <laughs> you, they'll be on offer for you so um so yeah i i, I yeah i mean in in the panto that i'm going to do in december demon vanity so it's mm -hmm. fairly light so going back to your most recent stint in Corrie then, and the, and the three murders, Leo, Teddy, Rufus, which one of those did you find the most fun to film? Um, I, I, I love Stephen Mayo, who played Rufus. I mean, I, lo I love them all, but mm. um, we had more, we had more interaction and uh, we had more scenes together and we sort of work similarly. And so... I had a chance to observe his acting. And I just think he's brilliant. He's really, really, really good. And he's, you know, he's Welsh and he decided he was going to be an East End. He was just, he just would make us laugh. Not because he was particularly being funny, but because he just, the character was so fun to watch. And mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we were meant, to, I was meant to drown him in a canal. And um, yeah, I, I heard that. So, so what went on there? How come that changed? It, we were so excited about it because, but there was bird flu, and it was interesting. There was a there was a pub near the canal. He was drinking a lot. I come and observe him through a window of the pub. You know, I'm I'm, I'm he's got a hip. I have a hip flask. I want to talk, call him out into the car park and have a little talk, and then I I I sort of um, engineer it that we end up having to walk along the canal, and he's he's I've, I've spiked him with LSD, mm. and I found him in the canal um and when we lost the opportunity to do that because of bird flu we were like oh bugger it was such a good it was very visual it was like mm. shots of us quite dark canal together and but then when we you know got to do it 
in his um, sort of rented mansion and the, and the indoor swimming pool, it was just canal, chanel, chanel. It was just like this perfect, right? It was just, it was just perfect. And we just mm. had the luck, just, yeah, so it was good. And I, I, yeah, I had a great time. I think Rufus would have been my favorite kill. Yeah, well, I just loved how oh, the murder fun. played out over Stephen narrating to Michael about how, you know, to make a killing in business. That was such a clever idea, I thought. And, and that was that was the visual of walking down a canal and that, those, the, that narration was going on. Yeah, yeah, I mm. forgot about that. Mm. But um, I mean, I love killing Teddy with a hole punch too. That's so, that's so fun. I couldn't believe it when I read it, you know. <laughs> and then I have yeah. to give it to Michael. I, th I think that's I think that's going to go down in history. A Corrie history is one of uh, the most iconic murder weapons now. So mad, isn't it? This is great. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Le Leo's was a good one as well, being the first one, wasn't it? Um, we that, that was up on the up on the gantry outside the factory. We we worried at all that you might end up hurting Joe, who who played Leo, you know, bashing his head into the railings. Was it all all, all very well choreographed? Or you know, it the the stunt guys on Cory are brilliant because they don't they don't go for Hollywood uh, sort of uh, pat sort of uh, standard you know formula fight fighting moves because we're characters and we're not fighters mm. you know more often than not almost always so they kind of really really let you have a a hand in it and they just make sure that what you kind of want to do they'll do it safe you'll do it more safely and and they give you wonderful tips along the way so we were just kind of left to do it you know, ourselves with with sounding them out as to what the what we were thinking was a good idea or not and it, you know it was, it was scripted as well but in in sort of an outline of what was happening but you know michael it it really was scripted as an more of an accident than it was edited as and i thought that was very yeah. interesting i thought okay i'm because it was it was really quite accidental in mm. the, in the as it was conceived and it was, as it was scripted. I think they got into the edit and they thought this is fun. Let's just make it a little bit more of Stephen. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I lo I love the body going into the bin and everything. It, it felt like they were really leaning into the whole bin thing with Stephen. You know, whether he's skulking about the bins, chucking them about in frustration. I was a bit disappointed when Stephen didn't end up a bin himself at the end, to be the, honest. <laughs> the bin is, uh, I, I, parts of the script that I hold on to and, and, and want to keep are, 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 those, are those sequences that are just describing Stephen's actions. And that, that was that he, he, he goes, the back alley meltdown was when Audrey says, you know, apart from lovely Steve, and she's going to give all of her money to who yeah. says he doesn't need her. Go, oh. And I just go out, and like I said in Milan, he's he's already just he's he's over the whole thing. And there was there was a piece of wood, a couple of bins, and um, a, a bit of pipe. And there was a there was a kind of meme made up of me doing the Olympics because I was, but I saw that bin and I thought, I I really wanted to do do it backwards and and spin it around like that, hmm. um, which they said, yeah, great, do do that. Because I was kind of walking towards the set and I was in my dressing room and I was looking at that. And, ah, because sometimes it's very hard to do action on your own. You think, what a, and, uh, and yeah, they just, they more or less let me choreograph that on my own. Um, and the director, um, Jason Wingard, wanted three beats, which was so brilliant. He just knew he wanted three things to happen, which helped me enormously. Hmm. So yeah, that, that, Throwing the bin against the wall was just was it was a great outlet. But yeah, bins, 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 bins. <laughs> I I absolutely adored the scene of Stephen dragging Leo's corpse into the van after tipping him out of the bin too. Now Gemma and I were very lucky to have been there watching behind I, the scenes while you were filming that. I I heard that in in your in your in your um, yeah. I. I didn't realize that. Yeah. No, we, 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 did, we didn't say hello. You looked like you were you know you were oh, in the okay. zone, Todd. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny, isn't it? Yeah, no, that's brilliant. So you you sensed something was afoot. You know? Well, yeah, I mean, Matt Hilton, who was the director of that scene, wasn't he? He'd showed us um, the, the the over the gantry scene before then. And um, yeah, we we knew that there was going to be a body and, and it, was, it was very, very exciting. It was intense for us. What it was like, what was it like for you doing that really physical solo scene that you knew was going to mark such a turning point for Stephen? 
Yeah, it was, um, again, it was a night shoot, as you remember. It was a bit drizzly, wasn't it? It was like mm. slightly moist. Um, and I was, it's again, these scenes, I've, I've kept that page because I love these these scenes where you just, you kind of, you're working with the director and you're kind of directing yourself. And I think I surprised everyone because I think everyone thought, okay, he's going to, you know, at one point it said he, he pulls him up a ramp and I thought, well, there's no ramp around to, to attach to the back of the van. So that's not going to work. And um, I thought he's got to be really emotional because this is like, ugh, a, 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 like a corpse. Like uh, this isn't, he's not, a, hasn't been around corpses, probably never seen a corpse before. Mm. So, so I, I really went for the emotion and I think, Lee Harrison, who lit it so beautifully. I love Lee, Lee Harrison. He's such a great LD. Um, he realized that I was, this This was not just going to be me dragging. It wasn't going to, this is, this is very emotional and a very interesting sequence. And so I think everyone thought that, you know, we're going to do a night shoot. Not that, not, I mean, the crew are incredibly professional and, and, and able and, uh, they're, they're superb and they they go for excellence all the time but i just think this was like okay he's gonna he's gonna drag get get let's get the body in the van and then you know it's a wrap for the night and i showed up did you see the dummy yes <laughs> <laughs> i can't watch that scene now without thinking of the dummy michael i mean it it was it was like a, it was like a something in the window at selfridges it was very light yeah, and uh, Joe Frost is this massive muscular uh, unit, and I thought I've got to sell this. So they 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 put some weights on it for me, if you remember, and and I just had to do. I'm I'm not good at miming things. I'm not you know Marcel Marceau, I ain't. But I had to sell this heavy corpse, and I had to sell the emotion. Yeah. So it was a really I really it. It was, it was great to do in the end, you know. Yeah, Another, a funny memory I had of it as well. There was one bit where you were, I can't remember, it must have been a rehearsal, and you were straining with the bin, and you go, yeah. and somebody says, Todd, are you all right? And you're like, I'm only acting. Yeah, this is, this is acting this bit. I just yeah. wanted them to, it's got to look heavy selling the yeah. weight of it all. But, there, was, there was also the I, great scene in the next episode where Stephen goes back to, to the, 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 the lane, the, the gantry, and, and looks up, and you kind of, there's a flashback where you see the body coming over. That was brilliant. There were I, I noticed that throughout this story, um, they were really leaning into the flashbacks and the special effects, more, much more than Cora usually does. Is that something that Ian McLeod had wanted to push for more of? You know, I, I mean, I think, I, think that, I think that might've been Matt Hilton, um, who's so brilliant. Mm. <laughs> that i remember him showing it to me on his ipad when we were in the canteen at one point when he just had a rough edit of it um i don't know so much about flashbacks but i know that um i, th I think like the, the the roof box was very kind of psycho i think there were a lot of thriller-esque hitler uh, uh um hitchcock uh mm -hmm. kind of parallels going on in their in their in their minds i'm like getting to the airport and the passport's not in the passport folder and um yeah it, it had a it had, i think it had a kind of a, a feeling of quite a bit of hitchcock going on you know where where, where norman bates sinks the car in the pond behind yeah. the hotel and yeah. they, they they were they were just kind of they were it was that kind of filmic thing and the kind of the narration about uh, to Michael about Rufus was kind of a filmic flashback, mm. wasn't it? And yeah. yeah, they did. Uh, yeah, yeah. There was also that brilliant episode, and this is one of my favourite Stephen episodes. The, uh, the the one where he accidentally doses himself up on LSD. T tell me about that because I, I love that. Oh, uh, brilliant, Michael! I, I I love doing it. You know, it loomed so large on the schedule because I thought, you know, you don't want to do bad drunk acting or drugged acting. You just don't you know it's just there's nothing worse than watching that not done well and i you you you're paranoid and you're you the, the blood's drained from every you know extremity and 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 you, you turn your head together and you can't believe what's happening to your mind and you know i think that just having to get into that 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 hotel room and um yeah i do remember being in clubs and people would would 
drop sort of whatever they ecstasy tablets or something in in the sort of early 90s and they would they would squat for a while while they were coming up and i said i think it would be right for Stephen to get around the corner finally get away from everyone in that hotel corridor and just you know you got to just get close to the ground and i, I just said I, I i think it'd be good to just squat here and he's just like okay and he's like, got to get up again because someone's going to come down the corridor but it was great it was great fun it was really it, good you know and, and i think it was at that moment when a lot of fans started coming round to the idea that this was less a traditional serial killer story and more a bit of a campy farce where the, the killer's life is just spiralling out of control. But that's how I interpreted it anyway. Is yeah, that what we're uh, going for? I, I, well, you know, it's so funny because I, if if you, I mean, I, I, I love the campness of it because it's it's so great, isn't it? But mm. if if you if you were to play, as you know, if you play in the campness, then it's not going to work. If you played like, you know, me trying to get the roof box on top of the car and enlisting help from, you know, Abby and and Kevin and, and Tim. If I if I believe in the panic, then that's kind of amusing. You know, he's having the worst day. If you think, oh, this is going to be a funny scene, it you know, it's not going to be funny. It's like in the theater, mm. you you know with your 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 fellow actors on stage, you'll you'll open a show and you'll get a laugh somewhere that you didn't expect it. And then the next night you think I'm going to get that laugh again and you don't get it because yeah. you're just not, you're not in the moment. You're not playing it truthfully. So the easiest, the writing was so good that it took care of itself. All I had to really do was, was be, you know, um, completely detached from anything that was funny and be completely play the circumstances. You, you know how that worked. Yeah. Yeah. And and that was also the episode where um, you ended up accidentally getting engaged to Elaine as well, didn't you? Do you, do you think that Stephen ever had any kind of affection for Elaine or was he just after the cash? I think so. I mean, I think he would like to have thought he did. And he, he, he thought this this would be this. Would, this is the this is the the kind of guy that I would respect, that I would like to be. But I, I'm really not in Tulane. And, you know, I think that's the respectable life that he imagined, you know, roaring fires and cottage and country walks. And But he's probably, I think Stephen still thinks he's, or thought he was, you know, 35. I mean, I don't think he ever really believed all that roaring fires and cottage cottages and lunches and country pubs thing, you know. <laughs> It did make um, an enemy of Tim for Stephen, though, didn't it? And uh, which was great fun to watch. Did you enjoy locking horns with Joe Duttine on the on the last I week? Did. I did. I did. And there was some stuff. I I go around to to his house, don't I? And I say, you know, maybe maybe this is just you um, projecting. And he says, what are you talking about? And I said, well, maybe there's something wrong with yours and Sally's relationship. And he really gets angry with me. <laughs> there was a temptation, and it was often scripted. And I think it's. Uh, the writing is is amazing in Coronation Street, and I, in fact, I think I changed five words in the entire year and a half I was there, or because I, I knew, you know, I mean, uh, other projects I, I work on, you'll rewrite a scene in your hotel room the night before, and you say, I, 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 I can't say what, what, but I, I, I know Coronation Street writing. If you trust it, it's it's superb. Mm. I noticed also I, I showed up like the first couple of, of sort of read throughs and some of the actors, you are really meant to go through the script editor if you want to change. And occasionally uh, some of the actors would say, oh, you know, on the, on the day, standing on the cobbles doing the first read, oh, I went, oh, no, no, that's so stupid. I wouldn't say that. And I just thought as an outsider, I thought you would, and it's a really good line and you're just throwing it away because you can and you don't want to say that but and i just thought oh that's a re that was a really actually good line i know it feels clunky and i know y you don't initially look at it and think i'm going to say that line but if you trusted it you know yeah. and and these are the superb actors who've been doing the show for years and it clearly hasn't harmed them at all mm -hmm. but um i i loved not changing any I, it became a challenge to myself not to change mm -hmm. any lines to, to make find my way through what exactly was given to me but uh, yeah, yeah. Go, going back to to tim again um it, was it fun getting out on location for those those chase scenes for the final week it was so much fun and it was sunny and yeah. um it, was, it was in the middle of august wasn't it when you filmed it it must have been yeah, it was it was yeah it was just great and it was um just the crew uh 
all the crew on that had been on at one or one or another time had been on something um big that that, that i'd ha had in steven's mm -hmm. storyline so we all had been through a, a, a good steven sequence together like uh, like Lee Harrison again was lighting, and uh, Woody Wade, our first assistant director, was was firsting, and uh, um, Lisa uh, and Rick were camera. I mean, it was just, and that every it was just laser focus, and it was, um, and it was fun, and it just, it it was it was the most, it was the most kind of well oiled and slick and 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 fun because they the crew are funny too, you know. Mm. Uh, time there I, I just couldn't believe it and when sal and i did that you know that huge scene inside the rovers often the first we'll have to remind everyone to be quiet because you know you just start talking and that's just natural and, and actors do it and everyone do it. but you could hear a pin drop for the entire day that we did that sequence and it would no at no point did the, did the first time say guys 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 would never you know I, I just i thought back about that i thought that was pretty incredible you know yeah mm -hmm. just it was great fun but those locations were great fun great fun. yeah and you you even got an airport as well didn't you liverpool <laughs> airport did they, did they have to like shut down the part of it just for you it was tough, off in a corner and it, it actually yeah it, it worked out quite well because then it did get quite busy so it filled up in the background but funny enough that liver that was liverpool airport is where i first flew in not manchester airport in 1996 oh, really quite amazing to be there to, to finish it at, yeah. the, at the same for some reason it was liverpool that i came into and uh, i said at one stage because i i'm in the i'm in the queue waiting to get that buy that ticket aren't i and mm. the police say you know stop and i think it's me and it's just, they reunite a child with its mother mm. and i and then the directors wanted me to kind of be thinking and then and then the woman says you know sir can i help you and I, I wrote an email to Ian. I said, is there any chance of a little wee little flashback of me and Audrey, you know, that I'm thinking I've seen a mother, <laughs> her son, her son. And, you know, I think there was no time for that. <laughs> but yeah, it was be back at Liverpool Airport where it all kind of started. Was there a part of you that kind of wished that Stephen could have got on that plane and escaped to Thailand rather than facing justice or the Grim Reaper <laughs> as it turned out to be? <laughs> so much yeah no i i did it's just it's I, there's always something in us i think you know a lot of us not all of us but i i always i always kind of want the baddie to go get get away and you know yeah. Just <laughs> each and, you know, yeah yeah, yeah but I mean, at least this has led on to a nice story with the police now breathing down peter barlow's neck do you think he deserves to be sent down for bumping you off I kind of do. I mean, it was, it was, uh, you know, I dropped the bottle to my side and Jenny had, had, I mean, it was a very strange dynamic anyway, because he was, he was sort of gunning his taxi towards us and he would have harmed Jenny anyway. It was a very, very, I mean, I, I like how it's a bit odd, you know, and um, you saw the other night when, when uh, Jenny says to Rita that he, he told me he wasn't going to hurt me, you know, that quite important. So, yeah, it's 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 a good it's a, it's good that it just follows on. I mean, Ian McLeod was clear about that, wasn't it? That, that yeah, you know, it's just it's going to continue. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, just before we finish, I wanted to ask a bit about the fan event that went on um, the other week. This is the first time Corey had ever had a fan screening with one of one of one of the actors there. Um, was was that how how did that go for you? What, were you? Were you pleased to do that? It was great fun. I really I loved it. Um, yeah, just to just to to be there when it went out live was a was a really clever idea. Um, Gareth Cole, who does the Star Tours, uh, wanted to to just get me onto the street at some point before I left, and 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 then he said, you know, at one point he thought, no, maybe around Halloween we can get all like um, Connor McIntyre and and you know. Um, Ben together and just do 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 a revisit of uh, like three villains for that event. Yeah. And then he said, then he said, no, Friday the thirteenth. Of course, you know, would you like to be in the room with Stephen Reed in the dark while you're watching? And it was just it was great fun. Was, I think and, and they want to just do more. I think with you know some of the like perhaps uh, Barbara Knox. I mean, I think it's this this talk of just doing 
doing events similar to that in that in that great space it's a beautiful um visitor center great auditorium so yeah, yeah. well it, it sold out really quickly so there's obviously you know the, the desire for it from fans and i think the fans love being this a couple had come come up from devon i mean yeah a few had traveled far and wide yeah. to uh, yeah. yeah yeah so overall then todd what would you say are some of your best memories that you're going to take away from your time on coronation street um I think generally, I, I I feel like, you know, if if you if there was an acting god and you prayed to that acting god for what you wanted, it would have been this last year and a half. Quite quite simply, you know, masses of things to say and do, brilliant actors to bounce off of, astonishing writing amazing crew a producer like ian mcleod who's so available you know um i could i could i could email him at any time not that i would overdo that but if i had a question about anything he came right back with yeah mm. that would be it and and to do it at my age i'm 63 and in in, in in six weeks time but to just just to be asked to do physical things that 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 I can still do, you know, still chuck a bin around and hole <laughs> <laughs> well, punch. No, it, it's it's just it's everything I could want, and to complete a sort of a twenty seven, twenty eight year arc yeah. as the same, just 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 heaven. Yeah. Mm. And now it's over. I hear that you're going to be on stage soon um, in a Bill Kenwright production in the new year. I can't. I, 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 it, yeah, I can't say what the title is, even though I have said what the title is, but they haven't found my co-star. So um, <laughs> okay. I want to launch it when they've, they're, they're, they're looking for my co-star, which is great. Um, but it's, it's, again, it's, it's one of my, it's, if someone said, what's your, you know, dream part for, for to be on stage, it's, it's this one. I, and it'll, 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 um, It'll play, you know, Guilford, Richmond, Bromley, um, Windsor. It starts in Windsor, Cambridge, uh, Oxford. Then it'll go up through um, the Lowry uh, Theatre in Manchester. So it's, it's, yeah, I can't wait to do it. Oh. Yeah, well, best thank of luck for it. And uh, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. I have loved watching uh, your adventures over the past oh. year and a half. Sad that it's over, but uh, still got the memories. <laughs> so glad you loved it. I'm so thrilled. It's yeah, great. Absolutely brilliant. Well, thank you again. Bye bye. Thank you. See ya.